Let's do it. Joining me right now is strawweight standout Stephanie Frosto. Thank you, Stephanie, for the time. And uh, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm pretty good. Just packing, getting ready to, to head out. Get ready to do business. Definitely, definitely. Now, well, you know, you competed this year. You know, a lot of people have not. A lot of fighters have been sitting around, but you did compete in February before the pandemic hit. How has life been since all the restrictions have been implemented? Yeah, I got lucky to be able to to fight in the beginning of the year. I actually fought on my brother's birthday. Um, <laughs> but then, like, right after that, that's when all the restrictions started mm -hmm. and you know, it's pretty much illegal to train and it was, it was really hard because we had, I had to quarantine at my parents' house. Um, we had to set up a bag and, you know, pretty much just be by myself because, uh, my sister wasn't able to train with me at that time. Um, Zoila, cause she was working and, you know, so I was just pretty much alone until some of the restrictions were were taken off and even then it was it was kind of tricky because you know we have people complaining like mm -hmm. people going into gyms and um or even training outside you know we get people saying like oh they're not wearing masks or you know they're putting people at risk mm -hmm. but you know we're putting each other at risk we know the risks mm -hmm. but this is our livelihood and this is how we pay our bills and we're not giving up hope that fighting's gonna be over so yeah. you know we just have to do what we have to and i get tested a lot you know going to the contender series like pre-shoots and mm -hmm. you know if anything if anybody around me has has you know covid and we would get tested too but it's all come out come back negative so I'm not really sure if what the restrictions are if it's just to you know have everyone stay at home mm -hmm. or if it's if it's like because I know it's a real it's a real issue and people mm -hmm. have died and you know I'm, I'm really sorry about that but like at some point you're like am I gonna stay in my room for the rest of my life just you know, because I'm scared or just go back to living and deal with the consequences. Go back to living and deal with the consequences. I, I think that that's, that's what we should be doing, right? Is just be careful and, and go on with your life. And, uh, and people have to work and you have to work, you have to train, you know, it's just part of moving on, moving forward. But it seems like they're starting to loosen stuff up. Have they, have they done that over the months? Yeah, things have been loosened up. Um, you know, it's we have a really small group that we train with mm -hmm. at our gym, and you know, we don't train outside of our gym too too often. I have a really small group of people I train mm -hmm. with, but you know, just respecting people's boundaries, and you know, if they're not comfortable with training with you, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to. Like, I'm not gonna force you to train with me. Mm -hmm. But um, I have I have good group of people that that they respect, you know, my concern because I have a fight and if I get it, then I can't fight. So um, we just have to find some kind of balance to be able to to get to to get to the fight. You know, you started your pro MMA career in 2010. That's 10 years of fighting, 10 years of development. You've had, you had so many accolade, accolades too. You know, what, what is your most crowning achievement so far? Well, my last two fights in Combates mm -hmm. would be my, you know, my two of my best performances. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I tapped out, well, I didn't tap her out, but I got a, this, this girl who was a black belt. I was a brown belt at the time. I got her in a triangle and I, mm -hmm. I stopped her there. I was really concerned about her jiu-jitsu going into that fight. So, you know, her taking me to the ground so soon, I was kind of like, you have to stay calm, mm -hmm. trust your training, just keep going. And then the girl that I fought before that, um, you know, she was big, she was taller than me, she was bigger. And it was, 
I had such a great performance the fight before that I didn't mm -hmm. want that all to go to waste and you know me make a mistake mm -hmm. and then not turning out so well but you know I was able to put on a good performance and pretty much show everything that I've been working on since since I've been since I started did you put a lot of pressure on yourself in in this recent run of three fights where every fight you, you know even though you performed well did you have a lot of pressure or do you feel like that pressure allowed you to perform better I put my I put a lot of pressure on myself for every fight. Mm -hmm. um, what starting as Zoila's sisters mm -hmm. pretty much puts you puts your name yeah. out there, and you know trying to live up to that. It, it was hard in the beginning because, like, I didn't have that same aggression as she did when she started. I was kind of like, well, I'm only doing this because, you know, you need a training partner and. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll let you punch me in the face, but I don't really want to punch you in the face kind of kind of mindset. So I mean, it was kind of difficult in the beginning because I didn't even know if I really wanted to fight. I mean, every fight I went into, I was I was terrified. And, you know, I kind of only did it because my, my coaches kept fi finding me fights. And I'm like, OK, well, let's try this again. <laughs> but once I started getting more skills and... Mm -hmm. Uh, getting better fights, getting higher level. That's when I really started to enjoy it and, mm. and was able to not put too much pressure because, you know, all the training I've, I've done and, and, you know, all the hours you put in the mm. gym is like, well, you know, if this doesn't go too well, we still have another one. So I'm not stopping anytime soon. And, you know, there'll still be another fight. But, you know, you have to perform and just go out there and do your best. In this recent streak, has something clicked for you that you feel different about yourself when you step inside the cage? Um, This last streak, I mean, there would be a lot of mental training that went into my camps mm -hmm. because in the beginning, I like I... I don't know if I said, but I, I would doubt myself a lot, mm. not just as a fighter, but like as a person, not being able to say what I want or, you know, do things that I like, but, you know, finding myself as a person was able, I was able to kind of set some boundaries and be like, you know, I'm not comfortable with this and like, I need to get like I need to get different training or mm -hmm. I need to, I'm not just a, a body for, for, for anybody anymore. Like mm -hmm. I'm actually fighting. So mm -hmm. I need to be able to get work. So I, I'm comfortable in, in going in there and then having that in my head, like, well, like I, I'm doing everything that I want now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's showing in fighting as well. Do you feel like this is the perfect time for you to be competing on the Contender Series? Or have you been ready for this opportunity for a while? I've actually, when the Contender Series like presented the opportunity, mm -hmm. I took it because like I've been wanting to fight in the UFC. It, it wasn't, it was something I was looking at, but it wasn't something that I wanted to rush in throw myself in there and be like, I'm better than these girls and I, I need this. But, you know, when they, when they recognize me, then that's when, that's when I'll go. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not, I'm not going to push and I'm not going to, like, I still have time to mm -hmm. fight. So I'm not in a rush to, to get to that level. But if the opportunity presented itself, I'm going to take it. Going back to uh, what you were talking about earlier in your career of kind of battling like the confidence of fighting and, you know, and, and all that. And you did have a, a slump where you lost three in a row. How did you dig yourself out of it? You know, what I mean, because I feel like that is the most interesting dynamic of a fighter is them going through a, a hard period and then getting out of that and, and just winning a few in a row. Um, winning. I mean, losing three in a, in a row is really tough. It made, it made me doubt myself mm. 
even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took a lot to continue to train. And like, I kind of let myself go a little bit. Like I gained a good amount of weight. Um, and then like, I think in that, in that, mo in that point of time, we were switching gyms. So mm -hmm. even that was a lot of stress moving from Ohio to California and then me losing again after a big break. Uh, it was really rough. And, but every day, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just, if I doubt myself, I just, I have to go into the gym, get my workout in, and then it gets a little better. And every day goes by, it gets a little better. And then an opportunity comes where, um, you know, the girl I'm fighting, she's really tough, but it's a fairer match than the fights that I have been taking before. So being able to have someone to watch my back and give me better opportunities so I can build confidence and um, better my training, it, it took, it took a lot. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It like, I did think of quitting, mm -hmm. but that goes through my head, but I still go to practice mm -hmm. and then I start getting better. And, I, and then I start beating people that used to beat me up. And mm -hmm. then, and that's where my confidence builds. And, and then when I won that, that, that next fight, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I think I, I can do this. Yeah, this emotional roller coaster right there. It, it's it's incredible how fighters can get through all of that because regular people, I don't even think they even come close to anything like that in their whole life. Yeah, I mean, I've been fighting, um, you know, since I got out of high school. So it's mm. like, what else can I do? You know, mm. I don't want to go back to working at a grocery store <laughs> or, you know, have having to. I could have went back to school, but mm. like I've been working so hard and yeah, keep losing these fights, but there are certain reasons why I'll lose those fights. Mm. Like the girls wouldn't make weight mm. or they would have way more fights than me. So I would also look at that and, and not just put to put so much weight on myself. Mm. You know, there are other things other than what I need to work on. It's, it could be something external. All right. Well, it it all leads to this opportunity coming up against Luana Pinheiro. What are your thoughts on her and, and the matchup? Um, well, I know she's Brazilian, so she's mm -hmm. going to come out, you know, pretty fiery. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've been training with girls that are like that. My sister, <laughs> you know, started, <laughs> yeah. started, we started uh, training like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready for whatever she's going to throw at me. And I hope she's going to be ready for me. Because it's, I've been training my, my whole career for this, and this is it. CSA, you, you, you have such a, a big group and just a talented group of, of women there. That especially, who have you been sparring with for this upcoming fight? Uh, well, CSA, yeah, and then I have, uh, um, I train at another gym mm. is FTCC, okay. and I've been working with one of their. Uh, Oh geez, Ronnie and um he's he's done a lot of stuff. Um he actually got Darren ready for his kid Yamamoto fight okay. and they were sparring together a lot and so he finally came back into the gym to help me so that mm. you know that means a lot. Mm. And uh you know Darren Wenoyama mm -hmm. you know he he's fought in the UFC as well and he's been coaching me for the past, I would say, five or six years, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get my MMA game into another level. Um, I sparred with my sister, of course, but, you know, in the beginning when we came to CSA, like, we had to stop sparring so much because it would eventually turn into a fight. Like, mm -hmm. we weren't we weren't really sparring each other. We we're actually hitting each other to try to, you know, get something back. And so we were, we would be uh, really emotional. So there's my sister and then um, Dustin Ortiz, which 
Oh, sorry. Um, Dustin Ortiz, he fought in the UFC as well. Um, he's been in the gym every day. Um, Canders, he's another black belt. Sorry, someone's trying to call me. Yeah, yeah, no good. All good. <laughs> he's going to keep calling. Um, so, yeah, Canders, he's the black belt from 10th Planet. Mm. And he gives me really good looks and twists mm. me up, and I got to untangle myself. Yeah. Um, Alexis Davis, another UFC mm, fighter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, black belt as well. Yeah. It's just a lot of high level people, and it mm. it makes you think. You know, me saying it right now to realize like I've been training with these people for years, mm. and it's it's kind of like I, I don't I don't understand before why my confidence was so. Um, was so low because I wasn't really looking at myself and you know the type of um, the type of people I've been training with. Hmm. So That's... it well, you know, saying it now kind of <laughs> reminds me like, oh yeah, these yeah. people are crazy. But <laughs> they're really good technically, yeah. and you know, some of them brawl. Yeah, it just puts into reality like who's around you when you actually say it out loud and and tell people about it, and and it basically you it becomes normal to you, so that doesn't, I guess it doesn't become a big deal. Yeah, exactly. You see them all the time, and they're just mm -hmm. like normal people. Mm -hmm. Like when Gina Carano used to live here, we would, you know, go to her house and stuff, and mm -hmm. it wasn't something that was like, oh, let me take pictures. Oh, we're gonna mm -hmm. have a movie night. It's like just normal people yeah, definitely now what do you think separates you from luana um what separates me from luana would be mm. you know my support system and the people that i have around me um and i've been working towards this opportunity and you know my mindset has changed i'm pretty much you know dangerous anywhere we go mm. so if you want to stand that's you know, that's my cup of tea <laughs> on the ground. You know, it got a lot better from when I started. Um, you know, even that middle game, which is, you know, where you start getting to the higher levels, it's like mixing up everything together. Mm. And I don't feel like she has that yet. She's either trying to come at you all crazy or, you know, she's trying to go for the head throw and then she's mm. doing jujitsu. But I don't see really that. Um, that combination. How do you see yourself winning this fight and, and earning a, the contract? Well, I do see myself finishing the fight. Uh, my last two fights, mm -hmm. you know, I I finished. Well, one was on the ground. One was kind of in the middle area because it was ground and pound. So, I don't know. I feel like she's going to try to catch my kick and it's going to get to her face. So, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice way to end it. Definitely, definitely. Um, one last thing. Uh, you know, in this in this sport, there's many different types of competitors, and uh, usually there's two categories. There's like the martial artist type, and then there's the prize fighter type. Where do you feel like you fit in most right now? What are the two? There's a prize fighter, and what was the other one? Like the martial artist style of fighter. Oh, I would say I'm the martial artist. Mm -hmm. I'm not too much into that, like. You know, look at me and, you know, trying to be super cocky or, mm -hmm. I don't know. I know that that's good to bring in views mm -hmm. and, you know, to build, like, the fan base. But I'm really into the actual martial art. Like, you would see me, my sister, or other people that would interview would talk about, you know, fighters on the roster. And I'd be like... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've been given a hard time for not knowing, yeah. you know, like people's names and stuff, but I'm so focused on training and making myself better that I, I just kind of, I don't, I don't really like to, I'm not trying to copy anybody. So I'm mm -hmm. not super focused on, on what's, what's on TV mm -hmm. more like my friends and people that I'm, like affiliated with like i'll watch them fight 
and I'm glued to the TV, but when it's, you know, fighters I don't really know, or if I'm not really interested, I kind of start to, like, I do this all day. I don't, I don't want to come home and watch it on TV, yeah. too. Understandable, you know, like, um, not everybody's the same. Not everybody's focused on their divisions or even just watching the sport. I, I, I think Derek Lewis, he was, in his interview, one of his interviews, he was saying that, he doesn't even like to watch the UFC and he <laughs> fights for the UFC. So it's like, all right, yeah. that's, that's cool. You know, that's you, you know, that's you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't watch too many of the cards either. So yeah. I understand. It's all good. Well, anyways, November 10th, Dana White's contender series, UFC apex. Stephanie, thank you so much for the time. I enjoyed our, our chat and, and hopefully, you know, you do go out there, perform well, get that contract and, and make your UFC debut very soon. Awesome. Thank you so much for the interview.